proper balance between privacy and national security. As even the president has acknowledged, this is a conversation we need to have. But not everyone feels that way. One of Snowden's most aggressive critics, Representative Peter King, posted on Twitter, awarding the Pulitzer to Snowden enablers is a disgrace. Remember, King refuses to call the award-winning journalist reporters, instead calling them accomplices. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. NPR reports, the New York Police Department said Tuesday it would disband a special unit charged with detecting possible terrorist threats by carrying out secret surveillance of Muslim groups. The squad that conducted the surveillance, known as the Demographics Unit, was formed in 2003. It brought the NYPD under fire from community groups and activists who accused the force of abusing civil rights and profiling. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio said his administration has promised a police force that keeps our city safe, but is also respectful and fair. Adding, this reform is a critical step forward in easing tensions between the police and the communities they serve so that our cops and our citizens can help one another go after the real bad guys. The Associated Press reported, the program relied on plainclothes officers to eavesdrop on people in bookstores, restaurants, and mosques. Police reportedly had systematically spied on Muslim neighborhoods, listened in on sermons, infiltrated colleges, and photographed law-abiding residents as part of a broad effort to watch communities where terror cells might operate. Individuals and groups were monitored even when there was no evidence they were linked to terrorism or any other crime. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a protester who disrupted a Supreme Court proceeding in February and whose shouts at the justices were secretly recorded on video that was later posted online pled guilty on Tuesday to a misdemeanor offense. Noah Kai Newkirk entered his plea in the Superior Court of the District of Columbia in Washington. He was sentenced to time served the night he spent in jail after his arrest by court police. On February 26th, Newkirk disrupted an oral argument by standing and speaking out against the 2010 Citizens United ruling by the High Court that cleared the way for more independent corporate and union spending during federal elections. Newkirk also agreed to stay away from the Supreme Court grounds for one year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. For the past several years now, area woman Caitlin Mooney has been convinced that each and every one of her friends should be a professional comedian. Our reporters spoke to Caitlin this morning about her, quote, hilarious group of friends. Karen is so funny. <laughs> Like, I can't even explain it. She's always just saying what's ever on her mind. She has this totally sassy attitude. <laughs> you just can't help but laugh. My roommate, Reishmi, she always has these hilarious stories that, I mean, they're just too much. I'm always telling her that she should just go up on stage and talk. I mean, everyone would love it. Mooney went on to say that her good friend Lauren is so funny she could, quote, definitely be on Saturday Night Live or The Office, a sentiment she echoed about a number of her other acquaintances, including her childhood friend Marsha, her college roommate Angela, her co-worker Julie, and even her sister Jennifer. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. That, um, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can, of course, join us online over at freetalklive.com. All of the features we share with you on the site, we give them away. Unlike those other talk show hosts that want to charge you for their sites, you just go to freetalklive.com. 
and enjoy for free. Now, one of the things you can do to help us is spread Free Talk Live around. You know, got a favorite episode of this week? Post it on your Facebook uh, wall or wherever it is you post, Google+, Plus, Twitter, etc., and let your friends and family know about Free Talk Live. Uh, we're more shareable now than ever before, having cut back dramatically on in-show podcast commercials, also cutting back on the promos and things that we say during our live show, our live reads. You may have noticed we're not doing as many website-y kind of promos like I'm doing right now, uh, go to freetalklive.com. Yeah, they're not happening as uh, as often now, so we're getting back into the show content faster. So again, more shareable now than ever before. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features there completely free. Now, we've got Dallas on the line in Texas. For those of you just tuning in, Dallas had asked us about not paying income tax. And Mark, you gave an answer about how you're with the Shire Free Church. And I don't know if it was your intention, Mark, but it, you know, it could make it sound like the reason you joined the church was to avoid taxes. And I don't know if that's what you were intending to say, uh, but somebody could, could listen to it and, and kind of come off that way. The way I see it, uh, Free Talk Live is a moral teaching organization and always has been. That's what we do seven nights a week here on Free Talk Live is we talk about moral issues uh, more than any other radio program. We rarely mention politicians by name. It's not what we do here on Free Talk Live. All those other shows, they're like, yay, team, our guy on the blue team, he's awesome. Or our woman on the red team, she's great um, and hot and, and, and from Alaska or whatever it is that they say. <laughs> um, we don't do that on Free Talk Live. We are different. And, I, I, you know, so, no, I think we've been I've been doing this all along. Gotcha. So, Dallas, you were telling us. Uh, that you have, as as a business owner, you are no longer paying taxes. Uh, you have not paid for two or three years, and they're now threatening you. Well, and the letters are always full of innuendo and assumption and threats. But you know, it, it, I, I you know I, I don't want to put a light spin on it, but I like them. You know, make them work for it. I, I don't mind messing sure. with them a little bit, asking them a few questions. You know, hey, uh, I, I never refuse to pay it. You know, I just ask them, hey, I'd love to be able to give you the information that you're requesting. But in order for me to give you complete and accurate information, I need to know if this is why you're contacting me. And, of course, they never answer. When you say this so, is why they're contacting you, what do you mean? Uh, well, I ask them specifically, are they I, – I, I keep it to two or three sentences, very short and simple, uh, specifically uh, – Title 26, United States Code 7701A23. It talks about a taxable year. And this is a term that the IRS doesn't seem to be able to get around uh, as far as they don't want to broach this subject in tax court. It's been proven by a couple of people uh, to this point. I don't have these case numbers off the top of my head, but uh, there's a gentleman in Alaska who's been working with a couple of guys for the past two or three years. and um, you know, allegedly the IRS says you owe us this, and the question is, how is it computed? How did you come to this amount? Where is the taxable privilege? Where is the citizen of the tax? I mean, these are all questions that, that, you know, fundamentally we all have a right to our the fruits of our labor. I mean, at least I believe that. So is like there like a too. yeah absolutely so is there a step by step right because if this is income tax and it's applicable on a national scale uh is there like a step by step with statute numbers that people can go and find and go through this process Well see here's the problem they don't follow their rules anyway so That's true of course they, yeah if, if they want to make a big deal out of it that it's a, I look at it like a numbers game okay Say you owe them, or say they tell you that you owe them fifty grand. Well, if it's going to cost them two hundred and fifty grand to get that out of you, they ain't going to mess with you, man. Right? Yeah, I agree. Them, if you owe them a mil, if you owe them a million, and it's only going to cost them a couple of hundred thousand to come get it, well, chances are you're probably going to get your door kicked in with guys in. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at things. I think it is, too. Um, and one question that I have is, is oftentimes they just have no clue. I, I, no. They wouldn't know what, uh, you know, what uh, what money comes into Free Talk Live. We don't give them that information. So they'd they never have a know. fraction Correct. of it from yeah. some of the well, people have, we've done business two with. Questions, two questions, sorry, and it came about when I, when you, Mark, being that you're involved with the Shire Free Church, have you 
tithed or have you given up uh, your worldly possessions in order to be part of that? And number two is, is the Shire Free Church of three. Oh, did you say 501c3? You cut out for just a moment there. Yeah, sorry, 501c3. To answer the first, second uh, question uh, first, no, uh, it is not. The Shire Free Church has no interest in uh, yeah. in government privileges like that. In that benefit. I, awesome. Yep. And uh, just to go on a little further on that, uh, doing research on free churches, uh, the you know there's some information out there that suggests that the IRS is actually not required to be a 501c3 to accept uh, contributions from people that are tax deductible. This is usually the big sale uh, by lawyers who want to hold your hand through the 501c3 C3 process, right. and they want you to hire them. You need to be a 501c3 if you want to accept tax-deductible contributions. Not a true mm-hmm. statement from what I understand of having done the research. The IRS just wants you to think that so lawyers can get jobs you know, helping people with this. But ultimately, well, you can absolutely give a, a tax-deductible contribution to a non-501c3 church, from my understanding. So it's the whole thing. And I've just kind of lost my fear over the past couple of years. You know, I mean, if it comes right down to it and, you know, I get the feeling or the idea that they are going to be kicking in my door with automatic weapons, I feel like I can always back up and go, maybe I made a mistake. Let's sit down and talk about how I can. I mean, over the past two years, I've been able to, to have enough what most people would call money because others feel that there's value in it. To be able to buy property, buy land. Uh, property and land are two different things. Mm-hmm. I've been able to build my own home uh, and actually save a little bit for retirement outside of this social insurance program that we're all forced into. But I claim exempt. Um, uh, I don't fill out any kind of marital status. I don't give them a 1040 at the end of the year. And when this, quote, alleged employer sends them this third-party information, it's not verifiable. There's nobody's name signed to that stuff, man. So what I want to know is who made the legal determination that my money was income. Good and it's questions. A very simple question, and, and, and they'll never answer. That. They'll never answer those no, questions. Never, never, never. Hey never. Dallas, keep us so informed. Then, as you know, as your okay. situation. Hopefully, it won't develop any any further. But if it does, let nah. us know. And because uh, you're, All I think right, you're guys. an inspiration to some of our listeners out there who may have been asking very similar questions, especially around this time of year. Is how can I get out of this? Thanks, Dallas, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you at eight fifty five four fifty three. Before we go on, though, Mark, the first question that Dallas asked was about uh, not a vow of poverty necessarily, but a uh, you know getting rid of possessions. He had right. asked you if you had done that as part of your involvement with the Shire Free so Church. So recently, you had uh, you've given away your your house to the Shire Free Church, right? I did. Yes. Yep. And uh, I actually gave my property to a sister organization, um, the Church of the Sword, and that's a Manchester-based organization, so that that uh, property can be what used. What does it mean to be a sister organization? Uh, affiliated organization? I wouldn't say there's an affiliation. Necessarily. What do you mean? I mean I guess you're a, a minister in both churches. Affiliated, right? I suppose, yeah. yeah. There's no official like partnership between the two. They're both Nothing official. liberty-oriented churches. In, but we hang out. Sure. Yeah. We know each other. How yep. about that? Yep. So what, so what about that now? You gave I, your house? I gave my house to that organization. But you um, still have like a television set or something. Well, yeah. I mean, what's a television? I mean, so uh, the house on that property has a television set? I mean, have you, have you seen the scandal with these Catholic priests recently? Yeah. The two million dollar homes and stuff. I mean, the fact is that uh, Billy Graham had a Gulfstream Five or whatever, <laughs> um, you know, as his uh, one of his vehicles. I mean, these these people have parsonages all over the country. Um, I mean, you know, this is this is the system that they have set up. I don't see anything wrong with using what I what appears to me to be completely valid designations that they that they recognize. I think your jewel encrusted cape is a little ostentatious. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a scepter. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. All right. We'll come back with more of your thoughts. You're certainly welcome to talk about the IRS, income tax, uh, churches, whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. 
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address and our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want, toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm, and people have been doing that tonight. Uh, phones and Skype have both been very busy. You can share your thoughts in either way. And also, if you care about online privacy, and you probably should if you haven't been paying attention to the news in the last year, uh, maybe you don't really realize, but uh, there's some pretty serious privacy viol violations going on on the part of the government out there. 
So, yeah, it's not just the government you have to be concerned with. Sometimes it's private corporations. In the case of your Internet service provider, for instance, they might be monitoring every website you visit and every search term that you enter. They might be recording that information for up to five years in some cases. And then what do they do with that info? Well, of course, they could turn it over to the government, no problem. They can also use it to data mine you, to, uh, to learn things about you, to then sell that information to other companies. You can stop that from happening by protecting yourself with ProXPN. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can download their app. There's, uh, it's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Linux users, email ProXPN for some setup instructions. Pretty simple stuff to get it working with Linux. So pretty much whatever system you're using, whatever device, uh, ProXPN has an, a solution for you. So you get started with ProXPN. You can start right now for free. Try it out. See what you think about it. And then sign up for their premium package with our discount code FTL20 to save 20% for the lifetime of the premium account. You get unlimited bandwidth with the premium account. You get servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent with their premium account. And you can uh, get past regionally blocked websites. So if you've got a, a block, for instance, that you, you have to deal with when you're at work or at school or at the coffee shop or in another country, if you've got Pro XPN, you are not blocked. You have unrestricted access to the entire Internet. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software. Get started right now. And then use promo code FTL20 to save that 20%. You can use that promo code whether you're buying monthly or annual packages. You're saving more with the annual package, obviously. In fact, with the annual package and that discount code, you break down the price to about 5 bucks a month. Plus, there's a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose but your privacy. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get started now with ProXPN. We've got Michael Dean. He's on the line from... Yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. What's on yeah. your mind tonight on Skype? Well, a bunch of stuff. I've been here on uh, on hold for 75 minutes, so I've made a lot of notes. <laughs> All and right. if you want to call a show that's less popular and doesn't have a 75-minute wait, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Michael Dean After Dark on LRN weeknights at midnight central time. You just picked the wrong night. I mean, Brett's here, and for whatever reason, the calls just come out on uh, on Brett's shows. I well, don't know I if it's coincidence. I want to talk about Brett and how he's the future of radio, but I also want to talk about why people would program for free because I run a software company I lose money on, and I love it. But first I want to say the ben, the ben Stone Indiegogo Get Ben Stone to Pork Fest has seven hours left. Uh -huh. We've we've raised seventeen hundred and sixty dollars of our two thousand dollar goal. Oh, that's pretty close then. Yeah. So if you want to go to badquaker.com, go to the second post down. There's a link to the Indiegogo, and he is a guy who suffers for his art. I mean, he makes almost zero money. He spends money like I do to do Liberty, and yeah. he had a heart failure recently. Uh -huh. He was in the hospital. Bill Bupert also had a, a heart a heart attack. It's been going around, man. Uh, us, I, I'm worried I'm next, man, if it's uh, intentional or accidental. You know, 50-something 50, 50 guys in Liberty who work harder than they should. Yeah, they're going to turn <laughs> the harp machine on you. Have me have a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, machine. but you have commi uh, you and your wife, uh, Deborah, have committed to come out to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You've already booked the tickets. So this fundraiser yeah. is just to get Ben Stone out there, the bad Quaker, who's a great podcaster. And yeah. really super nice guy. I met him a couple years ago at, a, at the first Pork Fest that he attended. This is the Porcupine Freedom Festival, for those that don't know. It's a summertime event. It's coming up in about nine weeks, actually. And uh, it's happening Woo. in, what, June 22nd through the 29th, I believe, are the dates offhand. Yep. Porkfest.com is the website, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. It's not a cheap thing to attend Porkfest, although it could be more expensive because, you you know, the travel's really the most expensive part. The staying on the campground isn't particularly expensive. Uh, but, you know, it, it's still some money is involved, and Ben doesn't have that money, so you're, you're <laughs> no. trying to help him out. Yeah, and I'm an invited speaker, and I'm paying my – I have to pay my own ticket for me and my wife to get in. But uh, we really want to do it. It is odd, but uh, – uh, that's all I got to say about that. Mm -hmm. All right. So how does one help with a bad, bad Quaker fundraiser? Go to badquaker.com. Go to the second post down. There's a link to the Indiegogo. Now, is this and, one of those uh, things where you get the perks? Like Indiegogo yeah, yeah. usually has like ben bennies. What do you get? What What is 100? Because you need $300 contributions, right, to cross this threshold? Yeah. For uh, $100, you get, a, you get buttons and a sticker, a Ben Quaker buttons and a Ben Quaker sticker. Sweet. And you, you know, get to meet Bad Quaker if you're yeah. at Pork Fest, oh, yeah. ultimately. And oh, I'll yeah. slap a yeah. School Sucks endorsement on this as well. I just interviewed Ben, uh, I think, at the end of last week, and it yeah. was fantastic. 
It was brilliant it, guy, right? It, it, uh, he's he's really brilliant, and I I forgot that it was an interview, <laughs> and I wasn't just listening <laughs> to just a listening podcast because <laughs> I just let him. Your show. I let him go on and on and on, but I was just uh, I was so interested, and I just I love his speaking style. He's got a great yeah. voice, yep, and yep. you want him at Porkfest, so I I highly recommend going and pitching in if you can. Great. What else, Michael? Yep. Were you calling about tonight? Well, uh, the two things, the soft, why someone would do software and why Brett is the future of radio. Sure. Uh, the software you got two thing, minutes to I hit them both. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, I run a company called meowbit.com. It's about making censorship proof internet and I lose money at it. And the reason I do it is because I want a censorship proof internet. Right. And, uh, it's, it's the fax machine problem. If one, if two people do it, it's not worth much, but if there's 10,000 fax machines, they're worth more each, you know? Sure. So you got to get more people to do the meow bits and the dot bit and the name coins. And then it uh, actually has a chance of taking a dent when they start seizing websites in mass. Like I think they're going to do pretty soon here. All right. I'm with you there, by the way. I mean, freekeen.com is uh, one example of that for me. It cost me money to run freekeen, and I also it cost, LRN me t- too. cost me a lot of time. Yeah, LRN is a, is a is a money sink as well. So these are things yeah. I do because I love to do them, and I think the world you know needs them, and I have my motivations, and that's it's and my motivations are not profit. Um, but anyway, uh, your final point about Brett from School Sucks I think, Project. Well, I think history is going to remember. Ian going to jail for a couch in his yard is the most important thing that ever happened in Liberty because when he was in jail, Mark started getting co-hosts in case Ian never got out of jail. And now you've always got this third wheel there. So you're kind of like the Liberty Journalism School. And I'm doing the same thing on Michael Dean After Dark. Brett is great. He brings a lot to the table. So does Johnny Ray. And I'm trying to replicate the same thing on Michael Dean After Dark. We're training the next generation. I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to replace myself. That's my goal. Yeah. Basically, I want to open source, doing good Liberty Radio. That honestly was one of the reasons why uh, Free Talk Live is named as it is. Was because well, first of all, I don't like I don't like having my name out on Front Street like that. But secondly. Uh, I know there's a chance that you know I might get hit by a bus or thrown in a prison cell or whatever, and I wanted the idea of Free Talk Live to continue on beyond me. So it was important that it not be called the Ian and Mark uh, show. Well, actually, the other whatever. night, I, my Ian internet show, was down, and two show. two of my co-hosts did Michael Dean after dark without Michael Dean, and nice. I listened on your uh, call-in number. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. but, but I, I've heard this a few times on the radio, and it always sounds a little strange when you hear somebody that's obviously not, not Glenn Dean. Beck yeah. doing the Glenn Beck show or Rush Limbaugh. Oh, I want, it done, I want it done after I die. I want there to be a Michael Dean after dark. <laughs> <laughs> In memoriam. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Appreciate Michael. Appreciate the call yep. tonight. 855-450-FREE. That is a toll-free number. It is brought to you by ProXPN. You may also connect to us, as Michael has done there, on Skype and sounds super awesome. Uh, most of the time. 855 450 free is the other number. We'll continue with more Free Talk Live coming up here in moments. You can take control. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? 
The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we'll take your calls about whatever you want. You just dial on in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And the website is freetalklive.com. I was on the phones with, uh, or the phone earlier today with uh, the gentleman behind cashintocoins.com, Mark. And I asked him, I said, Will, when are we going to get to announce this, uh, this special announcement thing? Whatever it is. Mark, you know what it is. I don't know what it is. Right. Uh, so I was like, hey, man, we've been teasing this thing for a week. Is this coming soon? And he said, yep, yep, it's coming soon. He's got programmers working, like six programmers working around the clock on whatever is going to be announced soon. So it certainly sounds close. I don't know what that means. It's like a week, two weeks. I'm not sure how much more time, but cashintocoins.com. Got something big in the works. Six programmers working around the clock on it. They do. Um, they do. And now cashintocoins.com is the place to go to get bitcoins. Now, bitcoins, you've probably heard about them in the news. Uh, bitcoins have crashed and burned and died about four times now. And the fact is, the fiery phoenix that is uh, bitcoin is on the rise again. They were as low as last week. Like, like three, 320 something? Yeah, like 320 something. They're at 530. Whew. Imagine if you had purchased some uh, you know so, some quantity of your um you know savings mm -hmm. in bitcoin at 320 and they went to 530 you'd feel pretty smart now i don't know if bitcoin you shouldn't feel smart because you have no idea what's going to happen with bitcoins you should feel lucky well i think i have I think. an idea um when i claim that i believe that bitcoin's going to go continue to go up i'm either right or i'm wrong yeah. but i'm not basing it on no knowledge at all um i believe yeah, but nobody's an expert on this but what does an expert mean? There's all kinds of experts. They'll get on and talk about stocks, and yeah. in the short run, they're wrong. You really, can all you can do is say in the long run. In the long run, here's the question you need to ask yourself. Is the U.S. dollar going to be the, continue to be the world reserve currency? And if the answer that you give is yes, you are showing 
a complete and utter lack of uh, historical knowledge because nothing is true forever. And mm. if the if the U.S. dollar is not the, going to continue to be the world reserve currency, which is an obviously true statement, what's going to replace it? I don't know. How about Bitcoin, a giant leap forward in the area of the, the technology of, of uh, currency? Don't get me wrong. I fully support Bitcoin. I'm invested in Bitcoin. And if you're just thinking about maybe doing a little bit of Bitcoin buy-in, cashintocoins.com is a way to do that. You can buy a bunch of Bitcoins or you can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. You can buy less than $40 worth and you'll pay no fee. So if you've been thinking about dabbling, just kind of getting your feet wet. In Bitcoin, cashintocoins.com is the perfect solution. If you're thinking about making a major investment, cashintocoins.com uh, can help you there as well. These guys are pretty serious. It's a business that has taken the necessary steps to be legal and safe and fast and easy at cashintocoins.com. Yep, just go there. All right, we'll continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Dennis, and he is in New Hampshire and on Skype tonight for the first time. Dennis, welcome. Hey, greetings, folks. I thought I should kept, catch up with the times. Yeah, you sound pretty good. Go ahead. All right. So, so I want to talk about free software. And, and first, a little bit of my cred, right? I've done a little bit of, of contribution to the free software movement. There's some free software that I've helped with, uh, and that was cool. I actually got a, a very brief conversation with Larry Ellison, the boss of Oracle, and got to ask him one question. And my one question was, you know, is, is Oracle going to, uh, you know, how are we going to take advantage of free software, make it into a revenue stream or monetize, or how is it not going to be a threat? Um, so, so, you know, I've got some free software cred. And I think I could talk a little bit about why people do this. And the short answer for me is a little bit like Michael Dean's, I think. You've got to understand that engineers are a lot like Mr. Wolf from the movie Pulp Fiction. We solve problems. That's what we do. And we don't solve problems because there's money in it, although, you know, that, that helps. We solve problems because we have to. Mm, it's, you're driven. Like, Yes, it's like you, you see something that it's, – it's like a, an obsessive compulsive person who sees the picture that's a little bit ajar, and they have to go fix the picture, and, and they can't do anything else, so the picture is fixed. And so for a programmer, when you're doing something and you go, man, this software sucks, if that software is or, – or it's just broken in some way, or it doesn't do what you particularly need it to do, but it seems like it probably could with a little bit of tweaking, it, it, another, another analogy I use is we're kind of like – the guy, the redneck who has all the cars out, and they're all rusting out on blocks up on their, on their lawn, a whole bunch of them. And there's like one of them that's the zombie car that's been made out of the Frankenstein car. It's been made out of all the other pieces, and that sucker can get eight miles a gallon. But, man, it can go zero to 60 in about one second, right? <laughs> uh, a lot of us are like that. So we just have to scratch an itch, and there's something that needs to be done. And like in my, in my case, it was a little you – know, I, I needed to wire up a database to a, to a thing – and this particular software language called Perl just didn't quite do what I needed it to do. But after a completely long night with caffeine and stuff, at the end of the night, oh, I got these two things to work together. That's cool. And it's my little contribution. And the, you know, and, and the free software movement is a little bit better. So a lot of it isn't so much just to say, ooh, here's my name. A mm -hmm. lot of it is just because I want something that does this. And there's something that does something close to that, and it very, it very much feeds itself. People just scratching itches to make the world better for themselves, and everyone else benefits as, as a side benefit. So, Dennis, well, here's one thing I've sort of noticed about um, what you know, just sitting where I sit, um, looking at sort of free software, open source software, is that it always seems to be a fix or competitor to something that's out there. That rarely are they creating their own new thing, that they look at something that uh, somebody's created and is selling for an ex extraordinary amount of money or something like that, um, and then they say, oh, well, we can do that better and cheaper. Let's just throw something together, and uh, then they make something, and, and you know, usually quite awesome, but oftentimes it's competition to something that exists as opposed to being something new. Oftentimes, and that's just because the reason that there is something out there for money is because there's a market for that. Right. And, and so, they can and, dump the money in it. They get the first, uh, you know, first to market exposure and make the money in that way. And, and that way the market's satisfied. Somebody came up with the idea. The market still rewards the good idea. But then people can do things for free and be involved in that, that, uh, you know, it, it helps everybody. Yeah, you know, in my opinion, the best video game ever in the history of the world, the most long-term addictive. I've been playing this game for going on, my God, 20-plus years now. NetHack, and it is just a little 
It's like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of game. Isn't that a text-based game? It, it is. I think they've ported it to to graphics, but I'm a I'm a purist. I, I think graphics are for wussies. Yeah, I remember so. hearing about that back in the '90s, right? And this this game is the awesomest, hugest. I think I've won it maybe five times, playing it for 20 years daily. And um, wow. Yeah, I mean it's daily. just the awesomest game. Oh, pretty pretty much, pretty much daily. And th- there's there's on oh around uh, Halloween every year there's a big tournament with people like logging into servers and there's just like name cred for you know the one who wins in the shortest time or wins as the hardest character to win and stuff like that. So it's it's super super fun. And it's all open source. It was done just by people who thought D and D was cool because it was in the seventies, and. Um, just you know, released the software for free, and other people picking it up and and making it better. So you know, it sometimes is not a market where there's competition in so much as it's just a cool thing someone wanted to do. Why? Yeah. Because they're engineers that have an obsessive need to just make stuff. Yeah, another great example of that, Dennis, would be the kind of the video game expansion world, like. Uh, back in the 1990s, I think, I think Doom was one of the first Doom. ones to really do this. Uh, there, there came out these tools that the players of the game could use, third-party kind of tools uh, that they could, use, which of course were developed mostly for free uh, by people who were just obsessed with these games, and they thought, "Oh, I've got a vision for a level I want to see," and so they made a level creator, and then they released the level creator to the world for free. And so then the world, you know, all these players who don't know how to hack together a level, they don't know the programming of hacking a level creator together or making that from scratch, but they can use the creator to create levels. So you've got all these people creating this content that is downloadable for this game. And now, you know, that became so popular with all these levels. I mean, hundreds of thousands of levels uh, created by people around the world. You made one of these levels, didn't you? I've made one, yeah. Assassinating your teachers in high school? Is that right? That was a graphics mod, not a level. But I also had a level (laughs) of the the, uh, high school cafeteria. And my friend made one of the auditorium. But anyway... Uh, this has become so big that ga- major game companies will now release their own level-making tools with their games so their fans can make content for these games. And again, fans aren't making money off of this either. They're just doing it for the love of something they enjoy. Thanks, Dennis, for your call tonight. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at MathGate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So, learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So, connect to MathGate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait, others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to MathGate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at MathGate.info. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Free Talk Live. This was the quote from the DEA's paperwork. Only products that were primarily intended or designed for use in injecting, ingesting, inhaling, or otherwise introducing marijuana and other controlled substances into the the human body. Injects marijuana. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how out of touch these people are. They're trying to make it look like marijuana users are strung Injecting out things. heroin junkies. <laughs> right. And it's just not true. No. Look, if you were to ever even try to put <laughs> plant material mm. in a syringe and inject that into your veins. It's going to go poorly for it's you. It's going to work <laughs> once. <laughs> You're going to get high one last time if you even <laughs> if you even make it to that point. Yeah. That's I mean, not a good idea. Never no. in the history of marijuana consumption has anyone ever injected it into their veins. Yeah. Kids don't try that at home. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves here. Toll free at 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Tonight with you in the studio, it's Ian. Brett. And Mark. Brett is the host of the School Sucks Project. It's a podcast and more. Video channel on YouTube, forums. What else you got over it? SchoolSucksProject.com. What else do we have? I actually just partnered with uh, Parents for Liberty and Justin Armon. Uh, is to, that a New Hampshire-based group or nationwide? I don't know where they are. They might be down. I, I, I think Justin is down in Texas, mm. and he is going to be producing a five-minute school and education news piece that okay. I can add to my podcast feed because we Great. do, you know, we do series on like the trivia method of critical thinking or better communication. Where Wes Bertrand and I are doing a series right now on the six pillars of self-esteem. So mm. sometimes we. There's a lot of stuff going on in like school and education news, and we don't cover it. You're so. just too busy with uh, ideas and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Sure, mm-hmm. I know how that totally. I totally know how that is. If Free Talk Live can be like that. I mean, we'll have a bunch of stuff in our show. I mean, I've got half a dozen articles that I brought into show prep tonight, and I know we're not going to get to more than one of them. So yeah. I would love to be able to talk about those other things in a format that's not Free Talk Live. So having a newscast is a great way yeah. to do that. Now, I have this program I use. I use it now, too, called Evernote, where I store mm-hmm. information that comes into my inbox. I realized I have like over 100 show ideas mm-hmm. had accumulated in there, but I'm just one guy. Yep. So the fact that uh, Justin and his team with Parents for Liberty, which includes his wife and maybe a couple other people. Isn't will... he the, one of the voices of the Liberty Beat? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. So same the format. Same format as yep. the Liberty Beat. And uh, Laura Lynn, the uh, unplugged mom, very cool woman in Oklahoma, is involved as well. And they're going to produce this five-minute thing that I can just slip into the podcast feed mm-hmm. and I can say, hey, look, we're relevant. You know, we're keeping up yeah. with the times and what's going on in, in education and in school news horror stories, which for some reason people are, <laughs> you know, they have this dark attraction to. So we that's that's <laughs> the newest thing uh, that's going on. But uh, very cool. And that's got, starting soon. That started today, right before I got here. Great. And the only other thing I'll plug is uh, the Renegade History course with author Thaddeus Russell. We just had a great conversation yesterday about slavery and reconstruction. Is this so, also appearing in your podcast? It's It will be in my podcast, yep. And you can go to schoolsucksproject.com to get more of Brett and the School Sucks Project in that way. And the brand new newscast. What's it called, the newscast thing? Right now it is called the Education F- Oh, my goodness. The Education Freedom Report. Okay, cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah. 
All right, let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts. You can join us online, of course, at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features there. We've got John. He's in Utah on the lines. John, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Thanks for the show. Hey, no problem. Go ahead with your thought, uh, call and thoughts. Um, I, I had a situation here re- pretty recently that I want to kind of bring to everybody's attention. Um, I, I, you know, my whole life I've always tried to do the right thing and be a good person and, you know, um, be honest and, you know, the kind of handshake type person sure. where my word is my bond. Well, I ended up taking care of a, an elderly person for about 14 years, and, um, you know, I'd pick him up out of his feces when he got, uh, you know, passed out and put him in the shower and mm. kept con- kept contacting people to help him um, who were in charge of him and uh, part of his living trust. And um, anyway, I couldn't get him the help that he needed, and I, I happened to get laid off my job. Um, I'd been laid off multiple times, but I had moved here to take care of him. And uh, long story short, uh, he uh, he let, basically sent some money to a company so that I could start my own business. And then he passed away, or he fell and hit his head. Uh. And uh, um, right after that, uh, I because of the HIPAA laws, you're not allowed to talk to anybody unless you're blood and uh he, he's my adopted grandpa mm. he wasn't my real grandpa but anyway he um he accused me of stealing that money and hold, hold on even who accused wrote, you of stealing the money uh my grandpa the guy i was taking care of for 14 years the guy who gave head. you money and then died so before he died he accused you of stealing the money yes yes okay. Yeah, and um, I, I believe he was convinced, um, coerced, I guess, mm-hmm. but there's no way that I can prove that. Um, but he loved my kids, and, I mean, they called him Grandpa, and he kept offering to put them through school and all this. Um, so anyway, I've gone to five different lawyers. I've, I've you know, had to travel around um, because his heirs are out of state and talk to other lawyers, and... Anyway, I've done everything that I possibly can to figure out how to fix this problem. And, you know, here I am. I've never done anything wrong in my life. What exactly is the problem? Is there an heir of his who's coming after you sort of in his name to try to collect? What what are you facing exactly? Well, what happened was they – because he was convinced that I stole from him, uh, he turned me into Senior Protective Services, who then – did put me under investigation, which made it so that I couldn't talk to my grandpa without being charged with a felony mm. for witness tampering. So the the detective, I told him, you know, let's make this quick. You know, I know I'm innocent, and let's you know let's get this quick. You know, I've never I haven't touched the money. If he wants his money back, he can get it back. Anyway, the detective prolonged it for over a year, and and then my grandpa, when I finally got to go talk to him he couldn't even talk anymore Mm. and then he died and i found out two weeks later that he took me out of his will Uh. or his living trust and i was going to inherit you know almost seven hundred thousand dollars so is it that this uh uh, this bureaucrat is still looking to move against you on this what's the current now that he's gone what is the current threat to you well well i got a lot of a lot of stuff going on i tried to collect on that money that he'd written to the company and the company decided, well, I'm going to be a prick here and and uh, charge him twenty grand more for the equipment, and uh, and so now he's not even, um, you know, he he wrote me a check back, but he wrote it to my grandpa, so now I have to go through the, you know, the living trust to get the money back. Okay, but, but you're my, not facing point, criminal charges or anything like that. You're just having trouble getting some money out of the deal that you thought you originally had. Right. I was taken out of his living trust. All of my kids were taken out of the living trust, even though he was basically our grandpa- our grandparent. And are he you asking for advantage. our opinion on this situation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my opinion is of... you can't count on any kind of inheritance from anybody. Even if things seem like they're going very, very well, 
things can change as you've discovered, and then you can be out on your butt. And when it comes to inheritances, this is when you see the very worst in people. Divorce oh, yeah. and death um, is when you see the very, very worst in people. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sorry it happened. But I, I sort of know what it's, uh, you know, I have, I have some experience in this area, too, and I know it, it, it's just unpleasant. And there is a good chance that, uh, you know, maybe your speculation is correct. Maybe somebody who was close to him, uh, you know, his uh, naughty maid or one of his kids or whoever it is, you know, was real close to him, managed to convince him, hey, you really shouldn't be giving that John in Utah any of the money. You should be giving it to me because I love you. Or whatever, or you know, they, there's all kinds of examples of people who I didn't know if this I don't know if this affected him, but have maybe dementia or Alzheimer's, who are constantly at risk of being taken advantage of yeah. by yeah. hucksters and salespeople. Oh, yeah. who, you know, they'll come into a, an old person's home and they'll tell them they need this service that they don't need, and oh, it'll only cost you a hundred thousand dollars. What's that? You say you only have a hundred and ten thousand? Well, okay, you can just cut the check for me and. See you later. And and there's so there's a lot of scams that go on and, and again, you know, you can be upset about it, you can focus on it, or you can just move on. And I would say you probably are best off, you know, moving on. You really can't have an expectation that anything for an inheritance is gonna come through. If anybody out there is planning their life expecting to get an inheritance, and I'm not saying you were doing this, but if you were planning right. your life, or if you are planning your life, say, Oh, I've got a rich aunt or whatever, and she told me she's gonna leave me some money. Well, <laughs> Maybe it won't work right. out that way for you because you know even if the the aunt did want to leave you money, there might still be uh, family members who come in and say, "Whoa, we're challenging this will," and you know then it gets all bogged down in legal yep. issues, and you oh, know maybe yeah. you won't see a dime of it. I wish you the best, John. I thank you for your call tonight, uh, Brett. Any other? Uh, things to throw in there? No, I mean, I, I think that obviously the, he's better served if he has a, a record of caretaking for this person for a period of over a decade. But, I mean, what it would really come down to is identifying the person who intervened you know, or influenced this this elderly person. It's going to be hard to do now, especially because yeah. he's dead. Yeah, but who was it? Why did they do it? And is it possible that he could connect with them somehow? And is but it really worth unlikely. the effort? Yeah, yeah. What, how much time and money do you have to pour into trying to get that $25,000 right. or whatever? Hour three's next. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain. And I, I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works. Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy. And it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. So you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. 
Gold opened today at $1,302. Silver opened at $19.61. And Bitcoin is trading at $511. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at AffordableSound.com or give them a call, 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, at coreymoreshow.com. In the news, according to a report by the Washington Post, the Federal Bureau of Investigation worked together with the Joint Special Operations Command to conduct hundreds of night raids as part of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. JSOC, a little-known elite military squad, used the FBI to exploit digital media and other materials to locate insurgents and detect plots. Following strong controversy, the New York Police Department has disbanded the special unit used to spy on Muslims. According to CNN, the NYPD's Demographics or Zone Assessment Unit was developed after 9-11 with the assistance of the CIA. The unit was used to monitor Muslim-owned businesses and mosques. Now, once that information went public, controversy erupted and lawsuits were filed. The NYPD Tuesday released a statement saying the unit has been mostly inactive since January, with most of the personnel reassigned to other duties. Syrian rebels and anti-government activists have released photographs and videos that they claim proves President Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons in recent weeks. The Syrian revolution in Kafar Zina claimed that the improvised chlorine bomb used in attacks Friday and Saturday in the village was the work of the Syrian government. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or phone 800-874-9760. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online at CaboBob's.com. The death of homeless man James Boyd in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was one of 37 officer-involved shootings, with 23 of those resulting in death. That led to a Department of Justice investigation that began in 2012 and ended with a finding last week. Al Jazeera reports that Albuquerque Mayor Richard Berry received a letter from the DOJ last week. It states that the Albuquerque Police Department was engaged in a pattern or practice of use of excessive force, including deadly force. The investigation also reveals that while officers are required to use body cameras, they are seldom turned on, and no disciplinary action is taken for the violation. A strong push is underway to see California's ban on the open carrying of unloaded weapons in public overturned. Fox News reports the California legislature approved the ban four years ago, but open carry supporters are looking to the courts to change that. They plan an attempt to use Second Amendment rights rulings from other locations to see the ban overturned. Supporters are hopeful that the legal rulings will form the basis for future court arguments that state prohibition violates the Constitution. Gun opponents say the tactic will not work. The Brazilian company Moscomet is launching the largest field test of genetically modified mosquitoes in Brazil. The mosquitoes are part of an experiment designed to reduce the mosquito population and to slow the spread of mosquito-related illness. Critics are worried about the potential effects on human health and environment. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at BitmainTech.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a sp- The FBI has successfully executed a raid on the Visa Corporation, exposing what could be the largest credit card scam in U.S. history. 
According to authorities, the Visa Syndicate for years fooled millions of Americans by issuing convincing-looking credit cards carefully designed to dupe consumers into spending far more money than they had. Investigators believe the fraudulent corporation also lured victims in with enticing rewards programs and free gifts, thereby trapping them in a spiral of debt they could never hope to repay. According to the results of a groundbreaking new study, 96% of humans would rather be a singing, dancing, animatronic bear. The study finds that a great majority of people on the planet would prefer to trade in their regular lives for one in which they sat on a plastic log, strummed a banjo, and sang songs on a stage with all their goofy bear friends. Respondents also stated that not being a sentient human being with feelings of doubt, sadness, and pain contributed to the decision. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We're doing hour number three right now. Still plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. You can join us on the phones at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So hit us up in whatever way is appropriate for you. We have all kinds of stuff to talk about tonight. We've been getting a lot of phone calls. Of course, we'll go to your calls first. That is the focus of this radio program. The show is hosted tonight by me, Ian. And me, Brett. And, and me, Mark. And uh, we will go right back into your calls. In fact, going to Skype first, where Liberty Phoenix is on the line in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live, Phoenix. Hey, guys. Um, Brett, I wanted to get your uh, experience on something as to whether or not you have any little tips or tricks on convincing a, a parent who is reluctant to homeschool children to uh to homeschool them um in my situation i'm you know i don't live with my kids and their mom is going to school right now to be a uh, a counselor and she wants to work in a public school and she wants to work at the school that my children go to and i don't i've been trying to convince her for like a year and a half now to homeschool and i'm just at my wits ends and out of ideas yeah anything you have any ideas okay well that's what you've described so far that she wants to she aspires to work in the public school system makes it certainly trickier it's a big challenge yeah and what have you tried to uh bring up so far and what kind of um, resistance or feedback have you gotten well i've shown her you know the fact that we could get get it at basically no cost um the only issue would be would be the fact that we'd have to have somebody there and her issue she, well she she doesn't go along with the whole you know libertarian mindset she's completely comfortable being a statist she's on welfare also so a forth. challenge um, yeah yeah so i mean she, when you've got me oh i'm just that crazy conspiracy guy and you know she's grew up hood and ghetto all of her life um it's it, it it just seems like a brick wall at every sense. Okay. So I would ask, before you frustrate yourself or before you strain the relationship, which I'm guessing is probably somewhat already strained, you said you're not together, right? Well, we, we work a hell of a lot better as friends. Okay. So. Okay, so you, you get along for the sake of the children, is that fair to say, but you're no longer in a romantic relationship? Correct. Correct. Well, she's actually getting married this June, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. All right. Um, I would ask a very clear question. I would say, what would you need to know, or what information would change your view of you know the merits of public school, the kids being in public school, uh, their education, and there's several angles to come at it from, right? Like their education, their safety. Where Where did you say you live? Illinois. Illinois. Where in Illinois? Uh, Aurora. It's about forty-five minutes southwest of Chicago. Oh, Wayne's World. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I know Aurora. Um, okay, so <laughs> you have uh, you have some challenges, but you should at least see if you can make yourself a map of mm -hmm. you know a possible strategy that you can go forward. Because maybe you know, for a lot of people, the school in the state is is just a religion, and it's and it's very very frustrating and. If you don't have the right strategies, you can wind up just straining a relationship to the point where it breaks. And then, you know, it's it's safe to say that the kids might be in an even more danger 
of being well this is a good question yeah it's a very good question question you're talking about well what would it take what could i say you know or what information could i give you more of you know or what information period could i give you that would change your mind or help you better assess this situation too Uh, and this is a a question that you can ask of a variety of subjects maybe not just even on uh on on the subject of schools like the police state what what is it that is, you know, that is to you would identify this being a police state? Get the objections from somebody. And then that's kind of what you're asking for here is what is this person's objections? What do they need to have overcome in order to consider this? And they may come back with there is nothing you could say. I firmly believe that the government school system is the way to uh, to educate a child. And there's no, no amount of persuading, no amount of uh, evidence. It doesn't matter what you show me. They could come out and come back with that answer, but they may have something specific that is holding them back. Yeah, and you want to just be able to send an invitation, you know, to to say I'm willing to have a dialogue, to say that I want something back or I want information, I want feedback from you, right? Because so it's so easy for people like us who are trying to share and spread these ideas to come across as, dare I say, forceful. Yeah, just zealot- <laughs> zealotous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've had like three conversations with people in the last week who mentioned libertarianism as reminding them of a religion, you know? And I, and I see how it looks that way for an outsider. So you want to obviously go forward. If this is something that's important to you, uh, showing that you're compassionate, that you're understanding of what her current views are, and not to be, you know, I already caught myself kind of being demeaning in this conversation, like, oh, for her, it's probably if she's on welfare and she wants to be a counselor, it's probably just a religion, right? So I'm I'm setting myself up to fail uh, just thinking about it in some ways. So you have to make sure that you that you don't do that, that you understand that this is somebody who's using at this time the best strategies that they have available to them. And maybe there's certain things that they don't want to look at because they want an easier path, and maybe that's what the priority is. So maybe ease, if ease is the priority, that might be how you have to direct, you know, whatever information you're providing. Well, now you're probably not coming out this blind. I mean, focus on like how much more, how much more like this type of life could make life easier focus on showing her that yeah i mean that that's a possibility but i i think what's really important is not just to say oh this is one of those type of types of people you know you really have to understand as much as you can and and again you know this could just be a total dead end i think ian said something like that there might be nothing that can convince me but at that least might you'll be get the you... answer up but, front and then you don't have to wait worry about it yeah and and maybe <laughs> yeah. that helps you it, it, if you want to formulate a new strategy but if saying like if I went out and invested time and effort, you could say to her to gather information. What would it be? What would you have to see? What would I have to be able to prove? I think is a very very valuable first step here. So it doesn't just seem like you're you know throwing all of this information. Now that's at a great answer for somebody who hasn't broached the subject before. But I'm going to guess that you probably have had conversations with the uh, the ex wife, right? I mean, this wouldn't be your first conversation about the subject. Not, not, not hardly. But I mean, I've never. It's always been, you know, something in passing. It's not something that I've ever actually taken the time and done the research into, and actually developed a decent presentation to where I could actually convince her. So I think, I, I think that would be the 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 main issue. I've actually got to put in the time and the and the focus in order to actually concrete these ideas in a something that she can understand and focus it towards showing her how much easier life would be without that presuming that's what she likes some people might want to challenge you know they might like the idea of taking it on themselves and and whatever the extra challenge would be so if, if she values ease if she values being able to you know take it easy then that might be valuable for her but yeah asking her the question of you know what is it that you need to know about this what can what information can i provide you with i think that's an important thing but mark i'm curious uh you uh, did laura your wife did she initially, you know, right out the gate support homeschooling? Uh, because you are doing that with your son. She mostly did. She did. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you and know, she came from kind of a lefty family, right? Yeah, uh, her mm-hmm. family are labor Democrats, mm-hmm. and um, you know, she still sort of 
uh, people default, tend, even if they believe in the ideas of liberty, when they're voting, they tend to default to whichever party scares them less. <laughs> um, you know, and I don't think that that's I don't think that's even a problem because you know who cares? Voting's nearly mathematically pointless. So you didn't have hurdles to overcome with uh, with Laura? Not for homeschooling, no. But one thing, um, you know, this is just about convincing people. And one, when it came to the ideas of liberty, what worked for my wife um, was essentially talking through problems with her, asking for help in, uh, you know, in solutions, like uh, theoretical solutions to problems. You know, I've got a liberty-oriented uh, radio program. I have to provo- provide liberty-oriented answers to my audience. Laura, can you help me? Can we come up with liberty-oriented solutions to these problems? So at that point, you actually uh, cause the person to, uh, to to come up with solutions themselves. That's always an important thing to do. Liberty Phoenix, thank right. you for your call tonight. And there's also some great resources out there like the Advocates for Self-Government that have some wonderful books and audio on how to be more persuasive when it comes to spreading the ideas of freedom. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, That is the Pro XPN toll-free line, and you can Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Bring up whatever's on your mind. That is the point of Free Talk Live, and join us online at freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Would you like a free pound of coffee? Delicious coffee. 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica shade-grown coffee. Now, if you get a little of that acid reflux thing from drinking coffee... Shade grown's the way to go since it uh, doesn't grow as quickly as the robusto gr- beans. It doesn't develop the acidity that they do, and it's uh, an entirely different coffee drinking experience. I may be changing your life with just this information. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of coffee. There, when you sign up for the subscription plan, you can cancel at any time. Uh, you will be. Uh, getting a free pound, and then if you decide to continue on with the plan, continue getting high-end, delicious coffee delivered to your door, you're going to help us help people around the world. Because if we can get a 1,000 listeners, we will be issuing a 100 microloans. Actually, every 10 listeners we get, we, we issue a microloan um, to people around the world to, so they can live a better life. Buzzbox, the, the, brand, the brand of coffee that you'll be getting, they care about the people that produce their coffee, so they're giving loans to people to join their coffee co-op. It's like a double microloan whammy with, uh, with, with coffee.freetalklive.com. So please, go give it a try. It's worth your time to fill this out and get a free pound of coffee. If you don't like it, cancel the subscription, coffee.freetalklive.com. We started out the show tonight teasing a story from vice.com, which we actually hadn't even read the first sentence of before your call started rolling in, called Don't Pay Your Taxes. Now, I love vice.com. I've really enjoyed the reporting that I've seen from these guys. They I first found them with their uh, vice guide to travel, where they went to North Korea and Liberia and just really just fascinating travel documentaries about these crazy places and they've they just do all kinds of interesting reports there was one i watched recently uh the life of a truck stop stripper where two of the vice correspondents at truck stops all right yes uh yes there are apparently there Uh, are so uh the, the the two of the vice correspondents two relatively attractive vice correspondents went and became truck stop strippers at a you know kind of nowheresville truck stop in the middle of Arizona or New Mexico or something like that already and uh and kind of recorded the creepy things that happen and the amazing things that happen it was fascinating there's the vice does great work so that's where this is from vice.com conservatives like to think of april 15th tax day as the date when hard-working citizens hand over half their paychecks to the federal government so it can buy hard drugs and an hd television for every deadbeat in america (laughs) (laughs) liberals believe something similar that taxes redistribute income from the rich and powerful and to everyone else which helps assuage their guilt over calling the cops last christmas on the homeless man outside their condo (laughs) reality is less convenient for either faction the vast majority of income taxes collected by the federal government isn't going to the poor at all unless prison now counts as public housing but to a military that enjoys a budget of just about equal to what the rest of the world spends on guns and bombs combined now i've heard that the income tax actually goes to uh, pay the uh, debt down on the national debt but and they i'd be interested in knowing how much money was collected through the income tax and how much was uh, paid in debt service on the trillions and trillions, what, $17 trillion that the national debt's at at this moment in time? But as you pointed out, Mark, money is fungible, so really it doesn't matter if it's coming from the income tax or coming from the printing of money. Either way, we do know it is going to bombing people. It is enough to make you want to stop paying income taxes altogether, says Vice. Corporations, the only legal persons who seem to be doing well these days, don't consider it their civic duty to contribute to the federal government. Offshore tax shelters and creative accounting practices have helped 57 of the top 500 companies in the U.S. pay an effective tax rate of zero. 
and that makes the rest of us look like suckers. If the planet's wealthiest corporations aren't paying their taxes, why should a short order cook at Denny's? To be sure, taxes in the U.S. are not as high as they are in Sweden or France, but the average American also gets far less for his tax dollar. In Western Europe, national health care means free trips to the doctor, not a mandate to buy private insurance. While America's priorities are such that more income tax revenue goes to the Pentagon than any other government program. Factor in the cost. And another thing to point out here is, is with NATO, in effect, that essentially the, the European countries have written off military uh, expenditures to the United States. They're just like, hey, they'll cover it. You guys cover it. Yeah. You keep the shipping lanes clear. Um, you know, we'll have a couple of uh, boats so that we can say that we have a navy. Yeah. Factor in the cost of caring for veterans and paying interest on all that debt racked up from almost a century of constant war, and you'll find that close to half of the money collected from federal income tax— Almost a century of constant war? I'm sorry, I, war? That, I read that wrong. A century of almost constant war. So, yeah, I, I'd say it's even further back than that. I mean, think about the conflicts with the Indians out west. Sure. Um, and the Mormons, too. They were, you know, the federal government was trying to kill them, too. Um, I, I think that it's been— it's even more than a century. I think that the first year was pr the last year that there wasn't a U.S. conflict that that they were involved with was probably prior to the Civil War. You know, drops in the bucket. Aside from the Civil War in the 19th century, most military conflicts, the one that Mark spoke of, mm -hmm. were internal and really quite affordable compared and, to com World War One. Well. Too. Vietnam. They were these guys were busy before that. I mean, as soon as the the Indian problem, as they saw it, was solved around 1890, immediately the gun. They said, "Where else can we point yeah, these guns? Cuba, Cuba, uh, uh, Central America, South America. Well, Central America and the Caribbean for sure. Philippines. Uh, yeah. Eventually, once they had to deal with Spain and Cuba, Hawaii. they wound up in the Philippines. Hawaii was shortly after that. There was a a, a tribe." that uh, basically controlled the entire uh, system or group of islands. And they, I forget which fruit company the U.S. military... Must be Dole, right? It was Dole. There's another, Del Monte was another. See, I get my U.S. military action mm -hmm. on behalf of fruit companies all mixed up because <laughs> then there was Guatemala, you know, uh, in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. But it was a group of businessmen who were associated with some fruit company that basically staged this coup in hawaii over this independent kingdom uh what a horrible story yeah well there's there's dozens like it so uh you'll find that close to half of the money collected from the federal income tax is devoted to covering the expense of armed conflict in one way or another if you don't like that you should know by now that voting for change hasn't changed much of anything with barack obama the only sitting president to be awarded a nobel peace prize proposing a record-breaking military budget the very same year that he won it Refusing to give your money to a government that can literally print money might not change things in the short term. But war tax resistors, as people who refuse to pay federal income taxes as a form of protest are known, have decided that they have no choice in the matter. They can't in good conscience financially support a system that spends billions of dollars on machines of death while millions of people go hungry. And they don't believe a politician's failure to act takes away their own responsibility to do whatever they can. And... You know, for me, what really sort of pushed me over the edge, um, made me decide that uh, working for the Shire Free Church as a minister was a better choice for me, um, was the number of children that were killed by drone attacks. Mm. Um, this is what, to me, what this is what the, the Republicans put it out on Front Street. We're rolling in tanks and people with boot and putting boots on the ground, people with guns, and you know we're going in, we're taking this land, and we're going to occupy it. The Democrats are, um, in my opinion, very sneaky and slimy about the way they want to fight wars. Bill Clinton fired Tomahawk missiles off, and uh, Barack Obama, um, you know, has these remote control airplanes that uh, kill people. I don't think either one of these is good, and I think that, um, in fact, there are fewer people dying under the the Democrats. But mm, I I can't stand this sort of sneakiness. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts welcome. More from the income tax resistors here in moments. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. 
Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? To unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save, call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and we're talking about taxes. Yesterday being Tax Day in the United States. Long-time position of many of the hosts on Free Talk Live is not to pay. And apparently Vice.com has a uh, headline article about not paying taxes. They're going to interview some of the uh, so-called war tax resistors here in a moment. We'll also bring you updates as time goes on over what's happening with Ross Ulbricht. He is currently sitting in a prison cell. Uh, He's awaiting trial, waiting whatever the next court hearing is going to be on his case, which uh, has been brought against him by the FBI for allegedly being the operator of the Silk Road, the infamous underground marketplace available on tour. Yes, it's still around. They've relaunched it at Silk Road 2.0. But they took Ross Ulbricht down when they took the site down initially, and they accused him of being the man behind the site, a.k.a. Dread Pirate Roberts. Now, nobody really knows if he's actually Dread Pirate Roberts. Maybe we'll find out more as the trial uh, commences. 
But whether he is or he isn't, if he is Dread Pirate Roberts, I consider him a hero for creating an amazing service that has brought safety and quality and competition and lowered prices to the black market. Uh, if he's not Dread Pirate Roberts, he's a man who's been accused of doing something he didn't do. And so either way, if you love freedom, you should support Ross Ulbricht, in my opinion. You can go to freeross.org, you can learn more there, and you can contribute via PayPal, Bitcoin, and check, I believe. So go to freeross.org, learn more about it there. This is a big, big case. It has a lot to do with privacy, Tor, the war on drugs. These are issues that you're concerned with. You really need to be following this freeross.org. His family could use your help. They don't have money. He doesn't have his bitcoins because the feds confiscated thousands of them. Wow. Uh, so they need they need financial help. freeross.org. As we continue here with vice.com interviewing some war tax resistors, I would kill or excuse me, I wouldn't kill another person myself, said David Hartsaw, a Quaker peace activist in his 70s. He continued to say, and to pay someone else to kill people in my name with my tax dollars is essentially the same thing. I don't have to look at the blood, but the blood is on my hands. Speaking from his home in Northern California, Hartso said he's been resisting federal taxes since the war in Vietnam. For a wow. long time, he purposely earned so little money he simply didn't owe any taxes for the most popular and most legal form of tax resistance. However, after getting married and having kids, he was earning enough that he started getting a bill from the government. These days, he pays half of that bill, explaining in an attached letter to the IRS that he wants the half that he does pay to go toward the Department of Health and Human Services, not all that killing stuff. Often, Hartso never hears back. Though sometimes he gets a form letter from the IRS stating, gosh, it sure would be nice if he paid all his taxes, which he probably just forgot about. Some years, the IRS gets a little nastier and takes the money from one of his bank accounts, and some years, it doesn't. Of course, the taxes one pays without a fight will go into the same pot as the money the IRS takes by force, letter or not. Hartso knows that his civil disobedience alone won't make a dent in a trillion-dollar war machine. But that's sort of besides the point. He wants it to be known that he doesn't support this system, that he doesn't want any blood on his hands. And besides, if we're ever going to get to a point where there are enough people resisting that it can make a difference, someone has to go first. I think the blood on hands statement might be a little frustrating and off-putting for a lot of people, especially when we consider that most people pay income tax because the employer, you know, does that for the government true so it's a it's uh, that dog doesn't really hunt I, I i don't think for most people because if people feel like they have no power like there's nothing that they can do about it and you say hey if you do this you've got blood on your hands that person is probably done listening to you did he say that the people that pay taxes have blood on their hands or did he, he just say said that he, he had blood on his hands so By paying is, taxes, he feels he has them. Right. It's, I think it's a str yeah. It's because I, I, I've said it before, and I've seen how it blows up in your face when you when you say it to people. You're just saying it's not right. persuasive to others, but for right. him, that's his personal reason. I understand that. Okay, that's that's important to clarify. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so a few years ago, I can't remember what year it was. Um, Obama put this, uh, you know, the Obama administration put this tax on cigars and um, unrolled cigarettes and stuff like that. And at the time, I smoked cigars. Mm -hmm. And I smoked two a day, and I was addicted to them. I wasn't, but once he put that dollar per pack or dollar per cigar or whatever it was, these are cheap gas station cigars, nothing, nothing fancy for me. And I decided, you know what, I can't. You know, they were saying that the dollar goes to help kids in medical or, <laughs> you know, this kind of nonsense as though that there's some kind of fund for this. And, oh, no, money's not fungible. Suddenly the laws of economics don't count anymore. Um, you know, bull crap. Each one of those, as far as I was concerned, every cigar I smoked was a bullet in a gun that was mm. going to kill somebody in Iraq. And I just wasn't for it. And I just couldn't do it. So in that case, that's what I said for me was I'm going to stop smoking because I don't – by the way, um, e-cigarettes really weren't – hadn't sort of taken off yet. Mm -hmm. That was another year down the line. If they had taken off, I probably would have switched to e-cigarettes. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. And I quit instead. And it just – you know, this way, it's healthier for me, and I'm not feeding the war machine. So that's how it was for me. So if everybody else did it, then it would be a real problem for them. I know every plan that says if everybody else did it stinks. 
every every plan that says that. <laughs> right. It right. just yeah. full on stinks. But I just couldn't. I, I couldn't do it. So. Hartsaw says, even if there's just one of us, or ten of us, or a thousand, or a million, we have to live by the highest truth that we understand. It's an act of personal witness, but if yeah. enough people did this, we could stop the war machine in this country. Instead of waiting until everyone else does something you feel is right, you have a responsibility to set an example. And I couldn't agree more with that perspective. Yeah. People, people always say things like, well, yeah, well, we like it when you're on the air rather than in jail. It's like, well... Why don't you start doing some of the things that I'm doing? You know, come to New Hampshire and start standing up for your freedoms, and let's stand up together, and then maybe they'll be less likely to attack one of us. I don't think you have a responsibility to do anything other than what you feel you have a responsibility to do. And I feel that uh, it's an important thing to set an example for people. Like, yep. look, here's how you can do some of this stuff, and it's not as dangerous as people seem to think. Hartsaw still uh, pays his state and local taxes because while state and local governments may not – have the SWAT teams with tanks. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, they do not yet have armed, or excuse me, they do say, sorry, I read that wrong, may now have SWAT teams with tanks. They do not yet have armed predator drones, and you do have to pick your battles. He doesn't just pocket the money. He refuses to pay the IRS either. He deposits it in an escrow account called the People's Life Fund, one of many ways a tax resistor can put his money toward a good cause while keeping the option of taking it back should those letters from the government become sufficiently threatening. Tax resistors can either donate their money outright to the People's Life Fund or let it sit there in case the IRS comes knocking. The interest earned by the account goes towards charitable, charitable causes in the Bay Area, about ten to $20,000 a year, according to Susan Quinlan, who works with the fund. She says what's a testament to is that war tax resistors are engaging in a conscious act of civil disobedience. They're not trying to get away with something just to keep a little more money for themselves. They're really trying to make a point that we as a society could be doing a lot better things with this money than sending it off to Halliburton. And that's sort of uh, somewhat what I've done here uh, with the Shire Free Church, where uh, we paid 45% of the taxes that they demanded for the house. They're about to actually put a lien on the property as a result of this in a couple days. But uh, we paid 45% of the property tax bill with the you know rest of it, 55% uh, is the amount that would go to the government yeah. schools. Yeah. And so what I did instead was I took $1,000, which was close to the amount of 55%, not quite. But I took $1,000, and nice round number, and I gave that to a local private school. So to point out that you know this isn't about personal enrichment as much as it is about me being able to choose what happens with the money involved in taxes. So imagine, it says Vice.com, the tremendous resources devoted toward building the weapons of war were spent on, say, anything else. The U.S. government is wealthy enough that it could make a serious dent in hunger and poverty across the globe if it focused on such things. Instead, it's set to spend $1.5 trillion on a fighter jet that may not even work, while billions are cut from the food stamp program. It's no surprise, then, that many people are so fed up with a system that prioritizes bombing the poor over feeding them that they embrace tax resistance, unwilling to wait around for the change promised by a politician every two to four years. And what's surprising is how infrequently these war tax resistors are actually bothered by the government. The state has a nasty bite, but it relies primarily on its bank. Those form letters spit out by an IRS computer. We'll talk it's more. Bark. Yeah, you're right. Bark. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's Bark. Bite. Banks don't bark or They bite. do rely on banks, though, to take some money out of your account, though, as we've seen. More coming up here uh, from the story from Vice.com and your comments. Welcome. If you don't pay taxes, free talk live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com 
Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot free talk live dot com if you want to know the latest about free talk live before we go on the air all you need to decide is how you want it delivered it's your choice visit news dot free talk live dot com you can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list plus we have a twitter account that you can follow and a facebook page where you can become a fan so visit news dot free talk live dot com to get news about free talk live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news dot free talk live dot com that's news dot free talk live dot com this Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe enough time to sneak your call and thoughts in at 855 That's 855 Skype us at username lrn.fm. And don't forget, if you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support Free Talk Live and what we're doing here Spreading the ideas of freedom on over 140 radio stations from coast to coast. Actually, we just uh, hit 145, as a matter of fact. So hopefully on track for 150 before Pork Fest. That's our plan. That's our goal, at least. That'd be nice. Uh, there was uh, once upon a time we celebrated 100 at Pork Fest, and so it'll be nice to celebrate 150 at Pork Fest. So you can help us get on more stations and help us get more internet listeners on board with Free Talk Live by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp. Freetalklive.com. You get perks like access to the AMP only podcast, which doesn't have commercials like our reg regular podcast does. You also get the AMP only forum and more. You just, oh, and the brand new AMP only Facebook group. That's something that's relatively new within the last two or three months. And I think people have been having fun with that. There's, there's yeah. always something new in there. Every day, somebody's posting something new in the uh, Free Talk Live amplifier group. So you can get on board with that over at amp.freetalklive.com and. You can get your AMP dollars matched. For the next several months, we've got generous individuals who have pledged to match up to $950 a month of AMP dollars that we get. We we haven't reached that $950 a month goal. We've, we're around six or $700, I think probably closer to $700 uh, right now. So you can help us get there and get your AMP dollars matched. So if you do 5 bucks a month, it's like doing 10 over at amp.freetalklive.com. Danny is in West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Danny. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. 
Uh, I was just calling in. I was listening to uh, the previous segment about tax avoidance. I don't want to say evasion. That's probably a bad word to use. Okay. But uh, I am, am self-employed. I've been an employee as well. And I feel like it would be important for people to know that the way the tax laws are written, although they may generally benefit corporations and things like that, there are so many ways out there to avoid legally with write-offs and charities and things of that nature to get your income down to a point to where you may not owe any federal taxes. I know state it's a little bit more difficult, but like you guys were saying before, most of that money goes towards programs that are near and dear to your community. They're not paying for wars and things like that. And I just think it'll be important for people, and you guys have the reach and the access to either bring up, I'm not an accountant by any stretch, but I know that my accountant is able to tell me towards the end of the year, hey, spend a little bit of money here, donate a little bit of money there, and now your taxable income is $20,000 or $30,000 or whatever it is. And yep. I think that this is essentially the method. The this is essentially the method that uh, we would use at my in my household uh, prior to me just deciding I wasn't going to file um, at all anymore. Um, and and it was it's just that I feel dirty participating in their system at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you're dirty. I'm 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 only saying that this is this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing their bidding. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. Like I'm absolutely not. I'm absolutely not saying that. One hundred percent not saying that. Um, but I mean I would do the same the same system and. And I would come up with a you know situation where then they're sending me money and I'm like even this is even worse. This I don't want. Worse. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been there. I've seen that too. That's because then you're getting money that somebody else wasn't able to write off, and you're basically participating in the same system. I agree 100. percent It's a tough one. Yeah, it's I find the whole thing undesirable, like and I want a nothing. To fight by yourself. Yeah, I want nothing whatsoever to do with it, and and it does seem like a lonely thing out there, which is why I would recommend liberty-loving people who aren't paying taxes come up to New Hampshire and join people like Dave Ridley and myself and Mark. Uh, Brett, do you pay them? Uh oh, that's a tough question to field on. No, I <laughs> right, don't. Excellent. One hundred percent. Danny, thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, a little bit more from Vice dot com. This is one of the tax. Uh, protester individuals, tax freedom advocates, not sure what they prefer to be called. Uh, I think we've been taught to really fear the IRS and the government and to feel that we have to comply, whether we believe in what it does with our taxes or not, Uh, Quinlan told the author. But the banal evil of bureaucracy in this case works in the tax resistor's favor. Most of the time, the IRS will respond to a letter politely explaining one's refusal to bankroll evil with a collective institutional shrug. If someone's open about what she's doing and not just stashing her money in an offshore tax shelter, she won't face prison time. Now, I wouldn't necessarily take legal advice from the uh, the Vice.com article. There is, I would say there is risk involved, but maybe it's not as risky as people think. And the privileged few with decent jobs in this post-job well, economy. One thing that we've seen over time is, is that they're going to give you every opportunity to pay up. To pay up. Up until the very the, the the moment that the judge's gavel comes down, are you sure you don't want to just get on a payment plan? You could probably negotiate a lower uh, payment too. Oh, I've heard this cases. over and over again. Um, look, I'm not giving legal advice here, but I've heard over and over again. You only you're only responsible for paying on income that's reported reported mm-hmm. income. So if they are getting 1099s or whatever they're getting, then at that point, that's what they uh, find you to be responsible for. And yeah, I've seen people who had tax debt of this, that, or the other. They end up paying a percentage of the uh, the principal, a percentage of the principal. Now, when I say I don't pay, the truth is that I probably left money on the table, right? Because I, I understood when I became self-employed, the first year I was self-employed uh, was two thousand seven and i came to understand the rules and i lived in massachusetts at the time how could where you possibly understand the tax rules well i mean i understood enough that i could write down to nothing i could write off to nothing mm-hmm. every year no problem for at least the next 10 years so you know i'd like to know what my obligation is to pay their taxes especially considering they have no obligation to protect me as according to sure. their own supreme court rulings right the privileged few says vice with their decent jobs in this post job economy could see money from their bank account seized and their wages garnished but even that's not necessarily going to happen they've never actually done anything says erica wyland a 30 year old activist from seattle washington she told me that when i asked her about the consequences of her tax resistance Wyland generally tries to avoid owing taxes in the first place, but when she does owe something, she files a return without paying a dime. 
And while she's received a few she letters... She files a return without paying a dime, okay? Yeah, that could be risky, but it's all, there's all risk involved in this. She's never responded. Everybody's got a different uh, system. Yep. Uh, she's never responded to those letters from the IRS, nor had a problem. Freed from the burden of paying for broken fighter jets, she has been able to give money instead to those causes she believes in, which she said is one of the things that's the most rewarding about being a war tax resistor. And how rewarding that would be in general if we didn't have to just pay a bunch of money into this one-size-fits-all bureaucracy, even if they were spending it on the poor. Maybe I'd rather give my money to the Salvation Army or well, some other group or Goodwill. 80, uh, seven, you know? seven, the, well, they did a poll recently. Only 17% of Americans believe that the federal government is as efficient to doling out funds as charities. So for God's sake, if you want to help poor people, why the hell would you give it to the federal government? There's a if lot you, of yeah, there's a lot of charities who aren't great at it either, but as far as choose. as far as administrative costs are concerned, uh, but they're all I, I would be surprised if many of them were worse than yeah. like most welfare departments which are like I think less than 30%. So so we're talking about an overhead of, you know, bureaucracy. Percent, yeah. It's like 70 plus percent. Yeah, the only thing that could be worse is like one of those, uh, you know, the ex-convicts calling on the telephone and say, hey, we want you to give the needy children's fund. You know, like that's the only thing that could possibly be worse than the federal government. You obviously have a certain level of due diligence when you're giving money to um, charities, but you you could throw a, a, a dart at a dartboard and do worse. So they Better tell a story about how she actually learned about tax resisting while working with food not bombs. She met a war refugee from Sri Lanka who refused to accept anything more than room and board as payment for his labor, not wanting to contribute in any way to the sort of violence that he had witnessed firsthand, funded in part by the U.S. government. If a poor immigrant could do it, she decided she could too, yep. and she hopes her actions will send a message that Im Americans are not as powerless as popularly imagined. She says, I want to show people there's more that we can do to resist war and stop military actions than just marching and sending letters to Congress. The point of an individual act of conscience, in other words, is not to make one feel better about oneself, but to spur collective action, to get other people to do the same. It doesn't have to be all or nothing either. By withholding just a few dollars a month, you could still have some effect, no matter how small. If a million people resisted paying just a dollar, the government would notice, said Ruth Ben of the <laughs> National million dollars? War know. Tax Resisting Coordinating Committee. I tend to agree that's not going to be noticeable for them, but regardless, I like the idea. If a million people uh, withheld a $100... Maybe that would show up on their radar. This uh, type of activism is nothing new, and the government has taken notice before during the war. George in Washington, George Washington, uh, you know, wanted the Quakers on his side. He said nice things about them. So, yeah, I mean, this goes back forever and ever. As many as five hundred thousand people during Vietnam uh, engaged in war tax resistance, with most simply refusing to pay a nominal tax on their phone bill. Well, and how the hell do you do that? I don't how know. do you not pay a tax on a corporation bill? While most got away with it, the IRS tried to set a lot of examples, in one case seizing and auctioning off someone's car over an unpaid tax bill of a buck twenty-five. which is a reminder there are risks associated with not paying one's taxes, particularly if the government begins to fear those individual acts of civil disobedience could cascade into a broader rejection of civil authority. But even the truly risk-averse, those who like making more than a poverty wage but also live in fear of an audit, have an easy form of resistance available to them, not letting the government withhold taxes from their paycheck. This is just sound financial advice, actually. If you stop overpaying the IRS and instead stash your money away at the lowest of low uh, savings interest accounts, you'll end up with more dead presidents in your pocket than if you let the government borrow the money instead. See you tomorrow. FreeTalkLive.com. Patrons at a local Boston sports club watched dumbfounded today as an unidentified man's personal trainer forced him to put on an embarrassing athletic spectacle for the entire gym. Like a machine, there you go. According to sources, the degrading little show went on for nearly 45 minutes, with the man reportedly being paraded around every section of the fitness establishment doing anything his trainer commanded. I wish I could turn around and concentrate on my workout, but I can't help but keep watching. He has to know how ridiculous he looks. Sources added that the whole spectacle was made even sadder by the personal trainer encouraging the man to, quote, push himself a little harder. It's like watching a f***ing trained seal. Okay, so when you stand like that, you want to feel pressure in your knees, like this, right here, okay? Okay, give it a shot. You root for him to tell the trainer that he's a human being with dignity and just walk away. But no, he keeps subjecting himself to this. All right. Let's have you get on your back, walk like a crab. Come on. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state and 
you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com Cap Black Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,302, silver opened at $19.61, and Bitcoin is trading at $511. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD, DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call, 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, at coreymoreshow.com. In the news, according to a report by the Washington Post, the Federal Bureau of Investigation worked together with the Joint Special Operations Command to conduct hundreds of night raids as part of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. JSOC, a little-known elite military squad, used the FBI to exploit digital media and other materials to locate insurgents and detect plots. Following strong controversy, the New York Police Department has disbanded the special unit used to spy on Muslims. According to CNN, the NYPD's Demographics or Zone Assessment Unit was developed after 9-11 with the assistance of the CIA. The unit was used to monitor Muslim-owned businesses and mosques. Now, once that information went public, controversy erupted and lawsuits were filed. The NYPD Tuesday released a statement saying the unit has been mostly inactive since January, with most of the personnel reassigned to other duties. Syrian rebels and anti-government activists have released photographs and videos that they claim proves President Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons in recent weeks. The Syrian revolution in Kafar Zina claimed that the improvised chlorine bomb used in attacks Friday and Saturday in the village